video about our manifesto. Everyone is creative. Une vie créative exige bravoure et accepte. Ali Hag, Bohor Yop, we are here to support you. Se celebró a la tour de Tina. E invitarte a hacer las cosas que amas. No, the culture jam for wagon. We believe in giving it up. We believe in giving it up. In aprender de los demás. In hugs and high fives. Unimos personas que son movidas por pasión y propósito. Creo que se inspira mutuamente. En nachbarschaften y städten auf der ganzen Welt werden. Todos son bienvenidos. Alla es welcome. Cual de luna y este bienvenido. Woman, Huaning, May, Karen. Todo el mundo es bienvenido. Everyone, everyone is welcome. So I still have goosebumps when I see this video because I know a few of these people and yeah, for me it's a really, really, really amazing video and uh, sometimes I could cry a little bit, but yeah. So welcome to Creative Mornings Cologne and our travel trip. I want to introduce you to our speakers, but uh, maybe Yuki and Florian, you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? And where are you? <laughs> you want to start? Should I start? Okay. Hi, everyone. It's uh, nice to meet you all online. Um, my name is Yuki, and um, we live in Cologne, just as um, Nadine. And uh, I'm a designer for my profession, um, UX designer, and working for a company in Cologne. Yeah, and I'm Florian. I'm a photographer, especially architecture, and in my free time I do a lot of portrait photography. And of course, when I travel, I always have my camera with me. So that's why we have a lot of pictures from Japan, what we want to show you today. <laughs> yeah, so you are from Japan, Yuki, right? Yes, I was born in Japan. And when I was nine years old, I moved to with my family uh, to Germany. So I grew up in Germany to third of my, my lifetime. So more in Germany living than in Japan, but still um, my mother tongue is Japanese. And I Can also say something Japanese. in Japanese. Can you welcome our, because I think in our video, there was no welcome uh, or no <laughs> part in uh, Japanese, right? There was no Japanese, right? In the video? No. 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 So I can you say something to um, the people to welcome there in uh, in uh, Japanese? <laughs> okay. Konbanwa minasan yokoso. Yeah, so welcome. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so last year you made your first trip to Japan, Florian, or was it? Yes. So. Two years ago, I think already. Mm. But last year, I've been to Japan my second time. Yes. Your second time. <laughs> by your own. Yeah, by myself. <laughs> and you loved it. Yes, I loved it. It was a bit, uh, I was a bit all by myself. <laughs> but <laughs> it was amazing, even by myself. And you can, I would like to travel as much as I can to Japan because I love this country so much. And it also reminds me a bit like a combination between my roots i'm half chinese and the other half is like a bit german a bit italian but so it's a mixed combination a perfect mix <laughs> so you, of, what would you say what is the 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 main part in him <laughs> i i don't know i think he's very german <laughs> <laughs> well, well i also have german roots my grandma is german uh, although maybe you can't tell, but uh, we are very tall 
uh, tall Asians, big Asians. <laughs> so um, people look at us when we were in Japan because people are a bit smaller there and maybe more skinny. <laughs> um, yeah, but we are mixed and uh, that's also great, I think, about us. Yes. Okay. You want to share your screen and... Uh... So let's get started. Because I saw the pictures and uh, maybe for a few of you, uh, I used to live in Hong Kong for three years, so I traveled a lot to Japan and it's one of my favorite countries in the world. So when I saw the presentation, uh, yeah, I was back to Japan and uh, I really uh, loved the pictures. So maybe you can tell us a little bit. Yes. Yes, let's get started. Okay, <laughs> let's let's go. So the first day when we arrived Japan, um, we landed in Tokyo. And oh, and by the way, there is an option somewhere on the screen where you can remove our faces. <laughs> so you have the full screen. So it's because we tried to, to organize everything, but sometimes it didn't fit. So yeah, <laughs> just to let to you know. To focus on the pictures. Yes. <laughs> On the screen. All right. As you want. Yeah, we arrived at Tokyo um, Airport and uh, we took the train uh, to a friend of us' um, place. Uh, he's called Junya. He's also a photographer and a very close friend of us. And um, yeah, when I land in Japan, in, in arrived Japan, I always feel very nostalgic and um, like as if it was a hometown for me. Um, so I also enjoy the train <clears throat> ride. For you, maybe it looked a bit different. It was a bit... No, for me, actually, it's totally amazing because when you arrive, it, you have two options to arrive in Japan. It's Narita or Hana, Haneda. Mm -hmm. And I prefer the one, it's... What's the more far away? Narita? Yeah, the Narita, because you have a long train ride and when you arrive in the morning or in the evening, you have a great light and you get into the city around, uh, with the landscape, totally amazing. Just a good start to arrive in Japan. And you can take photos. And I can take photos, <laughs> yes, or videos. Yeah. And yeah, directly when we arrived there, it was quite late. So we had the sunset when we were arriving there. Uh, our friend directly took us out for food <laughs> and a lot of food. Yeah, this is uh, Akabane in Tokyo. It's a quarter, maybe mm, not of a lot of people know. It's uh, not touristic at all. It's more, yeah, very downtown and a little bit shady <laughs> shady and um we went to he showed us this place uh, where you get oden oden is cooked stuff uh, in a broth and this is a very famous place uh, where this guy in the middle with the red uh yeah scarf um runs this place and he looks a little bit scary <laughs> and yells at you all yes. the time so and you have to like be go with his rule and uh, but it was really delicious and uh, we had a very cheap one cup sake uh, to to the oden which um, is not the best sake but it's kind of fits to this uh, a little bit um, yeah not fast food but uh, like snacky thing and um, on the right bottom uh, you can see um, that you have to drink the cup uh, until half and then you fill up <laughs> with the broth of oden in into the uh, sake which is a little bit <laughs> nasty but <laughs> it tastes really nice <laughs> yes actually it tastes very good <laughs> yes. it was amazing so yeah we had this experience uh, right after we arrived and after this snack we our friend junior he um, took us to another place like right after so we were like restaurant hopping <laughs> And uh, of course, we had a sushi, very nice. Um, 
yeah maybe you want to add mm -hmm. yeah because normally i i never really like fish that much since a few years it's all right but when i traveled to japan and got the real sushi it was just blowing my mind because it's just super delicious and the freshness of the of the fish is i can't really explain it you go, we don't get it here in europe or especially in cologne because it's just in the middle of the country but yes you you should definitely try sushi in japan even though if you don't really like fish try it mm -hmm. trust me and for example on the bot on the top right picture you just see different variations of sushi uh, tuna and there is my favorite one is i think in the middle it's tuna belly and it's called toro mm -hmm. and it's like melting in your mouth because it's so fatty but it's just the whole flavor get into your mouth and melt on your tongue amazing just go and try it and another thing that's for a lot of people, it's quite a bit uh, weird. Japanese people love to eat half raw chicken. <laughs> or raw stuff in general. In general. <laughs> yeah, because um, for Japanese, uh, like we and foodie, um, what is served raw on your plate in a restaurant, it means that the restaurant is very qualitative, nice because they dare to serve with raw. So mm. it must be really um, hygienic and um, very, yeah, high quality. So I love to <laughs> eat raw stuff, uh, also meat, like chicken, beef, of course. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what I enjoyed on the first night mm. as well. Yeah, I think when you're in Japan, you can't avoid uh, all the street um, food uh, booth stands, and it's just incredible. So uh, I loved it, especially in Kyoto, Nara. It was, yeah. And I just saw that a lot of people had just food and they're getting hungry. So no. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Because we are actually on the fish theme right now. We, I wanted to go to the Tsukeji market, the fish market. It's quite famous. It's, I think, the one of the biggest next to Paris. And they are, uh, when we were there, they are almost about to close and move more outside and a more modern way, uh, like modern buildings and stuff like that. So I had to take the chance to visit that place at least for the last time maybe but yeah it was amazing and just to the next picture yeah you see we didn't see the the real market because i think it's for, not forbidden but it's not allowed to go there for regular people only for professionals only for professionals i i i'm not sure about that but we couldn't go there but we went there quite early in the morning and like you see on the left bottom picture it, it they all drove like this star was thingy there and then it, it just made me so curious and i really wanted to ride that but nobody wanted to let me go on that <laughs> no. well, maybe i tried next time again and yeah you see the fish it looks so amazing there and also there are a lot of little shops serving food for all the fishermen there mm -hmm so there's also a good variation of different food and maybe yuki can explain a bit more about the food <laughs> <laughs> um so on the right side uh, we have two dishes there um one is uh, ramen maybe you know ramen yeah, um, noodles. I love it. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um this is of course made of um very light fish uh, broth and um, it's really nice. Also, even for in the morning, you can eat it. And uh, on the bottom, that's um, very long time cooked uh, beef guts, like mm. in, in Hawaii. And um, this, these are the breakfast for fishermen who is coming back from the sea in the morning and then they will have this uh, warm food for breakfast and makes you strong again yes so we had this too <laughs>
Oh yes. Yeah, Our ramen favorite. is amazing. Huh? Ramen, I love ramen. Yeah, oh, ramen yes. are just so good, and we are lucky because, like right now in Cologne, also there are some shops. It's not that bad here. Yeah, so that's true. It's coming. <laughs> It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know because when we had our creative morning summit in New York, um, we were a few days in, in New York in, in the city center and I just discovered an amazing ramen place and oh, every nice. day for lunch when they open, I was straight there and had my ramen. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we love it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, uh, not our favorite topic, but our most common topic when we were in Japan because we are smokers and in Japan it's not allowed to smoke especially in Tokyo and in the more dense cities it's not allowed to smoke on the street as you do maybe regularly everywhere uh, you have to go to very rare spots in parks or but mostly in, in malls shopping malls mm -hmm. So outside, not that good to smoke, mm -hmm. but you can smoke inside everywhere, almost everywhere, like bars, restaurants, cafes. Mm -hmm. That was quite weird. I, I would prefer the opposite, but I can understand it because there are so many people and it's just so easily to burn other people. Yeah, so if you're a smoker, Take check. It, check the rules and <laughs> check the spots uh, where you can smoke. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just one question. Was it in spring, summer? It was almost two years ago because people asked when, um, when you traveled or when the pictures were taken. In winter. Yeah. So after Christmas. After I Christmas, we, we took our flight on Christmas Eve and spent two or three weeks there yeah so around also new year there new year's and, eve yeah mm -hmm. and they so. celebrate new year's evening like um like we do right no no right Be yeah because i'm <laughs> always confused because in hong kong they celebrate every week something so there's every week <laughs> yeah. work going on so <clears throat> i'm getting a little bit conf confused who's celebrating what and i was in south korea for chinese new year and uh, oh, yes. we thought we have a big big celebrations and in south korea for Ch chinese new year even evening everything is closed so people are really at home so there's mm. nothing going on so it was really boring for us but how is it in uh, japan it's the same date like here like um the 31st of december um, so we don't celebrate Chinese New Year. Um, it's a different calendar there, right? And um, we celebrate a New Year Eve very quietly and with family. And uh, there's a tr tradition that you also eat a noodle soup, uh, but it's not ramen, it's soba. Um, so mm. um, there, that's a thin noodle made of buchweizen. <laughs> oh, yeah, soba, and uh, you you eat this to live long and thin. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we will have two pictures later. How we spend how we our celebration? <laughs> okay, because I know that there are a few good celebration and drinking pictures, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> uh, so there's some Buchenweizen is buckwheat in English. So ah, perfect. Buckwheat. Thank you, Dora. Thank you. Great. <laughs> buckwheat noodles. So back. Yeah. So yeah, on the picture you you see the capsule tower. Um, it's one of my favorite buildings in Tokyo because it looks just so weird. And every capsule you see is like a own apartment. And we were not allowed to go inside. But from the inside, it looks just like a Dieter Rams uh, invitation because it's all in the walls and everything is just made up. So you can just live there and easy to go. Like furnish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that place. So next picture, food again. Yeah, sorry for showing you so much food. Picture. Yeah, but 
Yeah, um, but it's, it's, um, <clears throat> we had to, had to because Japan is a food paradise. Oh yes, and um, this um, was um, also a very special corner of um, Tokyo. Uh, it's called Tsukishima, and uh, they're famous for this dish on the right. It's called Monja Yaki, and um, you. <laughs> there's a hot plate and you throw like a soup-ish liquid uh, with a lot of vegetables like cabbage and um, and then you like chop it very very fine and you you see this metal um, uh, spoon, spoon thing scrap thing yeah <laughs> And um, you have a little version of that, each each person, and you eat only the these bits directly from the hot plate. And I love this, but... Um, <laughs> but not, not possible favorite. during Corona, right? Uh, no. no uh, only. <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe. The plate is hot. So. <laughs> <laughs> All the virus is killed. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> but it's true that uh, in Asia, maybe in general, you, you eat... Uh, while you're sharing with, mm. uh, from one pot, like hot pot, you also like share it, and there's a sharing culture there. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's true. When I was in Hong Kong, yeah, we never ordered a dish by ourselves. It was more like, is anyone vegetarian, vegan? And then you decide how we pick our food and we can share it. So it's, yeah. yeah. People are now food. confused when I'm asked, uh, can we maybe share our food? And they are more like, what? No, <laughs> I have my own dish. <laughs> that's, that's so German. <laughs> <laughs> so German. <laughs> Stupid Germans. <laughs> oh, now we are getting to the nice... Uh, yeah places like the traditional ones yes mm -hmm. yeah this is uh quite touristic i think um but it's a must see it's um also we're still in tokyo um and uh, this place is called asakusa um and this is a very old um area with a lot of traditional um, buildings and culture is still there and uh, there's this temple and with a big lantern it's so huge Super and huge. handmade and um, so I also love this um, keeping this tradition and restoring uh, this and it's made of paper you know and uh, the, the lantern and it's amazing um, Maybe also a bit interesting about Japanese people, or a little bit weird, uh, is that they are a bit uh, superstitious. Aber mm. glaube ich, glaube ich. Um, so it's kind of like a ritual, but also some part of you believe in mm. these occultic things. Uh, so, for example, in uh, this temple, it's uh, common to um yeah this smoke you put you wave your the smoke uh, until your head so you become clever or more clever <laughs> people do that everyone who goes there they are like doing this yes and <laughs> yes and everybody's like the smoke but i need to do that yeah so yeah and, uh, yeah root, yeah ritual hmm. and um, also in the bottom um, I'm pulling out an oracle um, so <laughs> you, you you read a piece of paper everyone gets a piece of paper for I don't know one dollar like 100 yen and um, it's written how much luck you will have in this year and or not <laughs> or not sometimes you get unluck bad luck and or whether you should marry this year or you find a partner for your life or you will do great in your job or and that's like really detailed written on that <laughs> and uh, if you pull back luck you can uh, leave it in the in the uh, temple on the tree but if it's good luck you put it in your uh, wallet and keep it for the year 
Yeah. And what's what they are burning? That was one of the questions. What is it what they are burning? Oh. It's uh, incense. The, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you also had a message or something? Good luck, bad luck? Yeah, I, ha- I always pull good luck. I'm a lucky person. <laughs> even better, super good luck. Yeah, thing. big luck. <laughs> and it became <laughs> true? What? And it became the truth, so it became true? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, so maybe, <laughs> maybe it's a good tradition. <laughs> Stick on it. <laughs> yeah. Some area around this place. Yeah, just around this place, just to show you uh, how dense this city is built. Like, oh, we don't have that much space. We just put each roller coaster on top of the other one. We don't care about that. But to me, the, it just looks amazing. And yeah, all these nice places. Uh, yeah, and it's it. really, you have on the right side, really the traditional parts. And on the left side, it looks like, yeah, a metropole. It's, it's like high tech, modern. So you really have two different uh, parts, perspectives in one street. It's incredible. Yes. It's like directly next to each other. And Mm -hmm. that's quite often what we will see in Tokyo. You have like areas that are so traditional and then you have the skyscrapers and this super modern architecture, Mm -hmm. which is something that amazed me totally because I travel a lot to Shanghai and because I go there for work and this city, they sadly destroyed a lot of parts of the old parts. So, and in Tokyo, you, they keep a lot of these things. Not everything, of course, they, they need to build something because there are even more and more people. <laughs> I think more than two, 20 million people live there mm-hmm. in Tokyo. So you need some space there and build it upstairs. Yeah, so, and yeah, the night turns mm-hmm. and we are ready for food and uh, bar hopping and there's some pic- uh, there's a picture on the left you see this is shibuya the, the famous crossing and hmm. you, you know something more yeah. about that in one <clears throat> uh, green traffic light um i heard that 2000 people is crossing or passing this uh yeah crossing and that's so amazing and the when I'm there, it's too many people for me. I'm not used to this. And it's just overwhelming and so many, just so many people in one place. Yeah, it's very confusing. Mm. Mm-hmm. And another thing in Japan, which is very good to know, if you have friends there, always bring souvenirs. And this is something on the right we, we got from a bar owner. And you mm-hmm. know more about that. Yeah, my, my sister uh, lives in Tokyo. And so we um, visited her as well. And sh- her favorite bar, she goes there sometimes. Um, the barkeeper, um, a lady, um, she heard from my sister that we are coming for visit to Japan. And she <laughs> bought us this, uh, gave us this uh, handkerchief um, mm. for you can use it for anything uh, when you're hot you can like make it wet and like do like this or you can yeah use it and um this is we we didn't even know her but she bought us a present mm-hmm. it was a uh, really cute kind of yeah and this figure is quite interesting right yeah the, the daruma the the motif of the handkerchief there's some round things on it <laughs> with with a <the> face, <laughs> and um, this is called daruma. This is also like a good luck thing, and um, you, you get like well, there are many sizes, but they're like they're this also and huge sizes. Yeah, uh, you get one daruma, and it has no eyes when you get it, and uh, you draw one eye when you make a wish and uh, you try to fulfill this wish 
And uh, if you get there, like, then when the wish comes true, then you're allowed to draw the other eye. So it has two eyes. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> a picture I think a lot of people know from Japan. Yeah. Like you see all this lights and advertisement. And a lot of people, I mean, on this picture, it's not that much actually for Japan or for Tokyo, but there is a lot more people. Yeah. So what we have next? Um, yeah, this is uh, a famous street in Tokyo. It's uh, the Golden Street. In Shinjuku. And I think Yuki didn't even know about that place. But I saw it on the internet and I just wanted to go there because it just looks super nice with all the lanterns and the light and the people up there. And on both sides of the street, you have a lot of shops that serving food. And don't worry, we don't show the food from there. <laughs> but when, when I was crossing, the smell was just so amazing. Every shop was just smelling so good. And I wish I could have eat there every in every shop but we had dinner i think already yeah. <laughs> so yeah and um on the bottom uh, on the top right picture you see a kind of a bar and it's a two person maybe or if japanese smaller person three people maybe can get inside and that's it you have the bar owner and he's it's just tiny. standing at one place and don't need to move he just needs to grab everything from the back and serves you and that's it I mean, it's like magic they have everything like oh you have to want to eat a spaghetti okay i can make it like, how? <laughs> how how does he do that <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy yeah someone texted golden gay is golden gay the the area or maybe the bar no uh golden street it's called but i think ah, okay but maybe because dorothy she texts it golden gay gay guy guy maybe yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's the uh, original name yeah ah okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah and of course one of the most famous landmarks for tokyo is the tokyo tower and actually this picture is not made when i when we were together it's from my last trip oh, you cheated. i cheated <laughs> <laughs> but it just reminds me of the city so much not because of the tower but of the light especially and when you see on the right picture when the night turns uh tokyo just turns into another city and the atmosphere changes totally it's and so beautiful especially because of all these neon lights and First of all, it looks weird, but on the second way, it's just always like med meditational or like I just look at it and get confused of it, but it, in a good way. I don't know. Hypnotic. Hypnotic, <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, and it's like also cold night, like bluish lights, but you still kind of feel comfortable there, yeah. right? It's weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. One That's of the how reasons, I know Japan. <laughs> <laughs> one of the reasons I went to Japan was, of course, to meet my friends there and uh, my family, of course. But this was uh, meeting friends from, yeah, from everywhere who is working in Tokyo and could come. And um, I think almost everyone who is in the picture was in Germany or in Cologne at KIST where I studied design and they're from Shiba University which is quite close to Tokyo but also Kyushu University when I went for an exchange uh, but these people are some of them are working in Tokyo now so they could come and it was really yeah fun night and we had some uh, yeah, dinner together and of course when people meet like friends meet in japan what do they do they go to karaoke oh yes <laughs> karaoke and sing like a song or two and uh, i'm not used to it actually mm. so or we are not used to it and they were 
all my friends were singing, yeah, you should um, sing something together. And we were like, okay. <laughs> But there are a lot of songs in, in English. So a lot of the songs we knew. So that it was okay. It wasn't that bad. Mm. Yeah, for me, it was a little bit weird because especially the shy people I knew oh, from yeah. work, suddenly they changed complete <laughs> and they went crazy and nuts. And I was more like, and normally I'm a quite chatty person. I became super shy and I was standing <laughs> oh, yes, I can't do it. I'm so embarrassed. And yeah, my colleagues normally super, yeah, don't talk to me too much. They went nuts. It, I loved it. I really, really yeah, loved it. So <laughs> they changed the personality sometimes there, yeah. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> so I think a few days later we just went to the Emperor Palace and it's uptown. So all the surroundings are skyscrapers everywhere. But in the middle of that there is this big empty field. Just in the middle of that there is the Emperor Palace. And I think that's the most closest picture uh, way to get there because you are not allowed to go inside because there's still one living there. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's a nice place and it's a quite unusual view you will see in Tokyo because mostly it's just so crowded and dense. But in this area, you have a lot of free space. You like for New York Central Park, you can just make a bit sport there and to jogging and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was quite nice to see. Is it a river or a lake? It's uh, like old castles, you know, the water. Surrounded. Yeah. Um, surrounded okay. So it's more like a... Protect the castle. Okay. Yeah, I think artificial. Yeah, artificial. But long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so natural now. <laughs> And again, yeah, uh, I'm an architecture photographer, so there are some architecture pictures. And I love the way they build their buildings because they're just so symmetric, most of them. And in the perfection, like not all countries can achieve. Like even the, the thingies on the top, they are symmetric on both sides. And again, something you see in, in Tokyo is this different, Difference directly between a skyscraper, modern building, and old traditional housings. Uh, and that's also, I love that kind of. Which camera stuff. do you use? Which camera do you use? Uh, regularly for my work, I use a Canon 5D. Okay. But also, yeah, no, that's okay. And analog stuff and like this, yeah. Perfect. So Because I we changed are from Canon to Sony, so that's why I asked you. It was a personal that's question. That's right. I'm, I'm thinking about that too, but <laughs> maybe there's something coming from Canon. Okay. <laughs> um, the next pictures are just the way to our next destination. Mm -hmm. Or um, how we traveled uh, through Japan um, because we were in Tokyo now and we go to Kyoto and then to Fukuoka and stuff and if you want to visit many places uh, in Japan and not only Tokyo it's very recommendable to um, get this Japan rail pass and um, there you can for about 400 uh, euro dollar Uh, you can ride the Shinkansen, which is um, yeah one of the fastest bullet train. Um, yeah, as much as you want. And it's the most efficient want. train in the world, right? Yeah. So because For they week. excuse when they are a second too early leaving the train station. So in Germany, they ex ex they say sorry when they are half an hour too late. But when I was in Japan, really they said sorry because they were one second too early and I was more like what's going on here so I think it's the most efficient uh, train system in the world right 
they're yes. punctual it's clean they're polite it's quiet because no one is like like talking loud everyone is like very respectful and even the uh, people who are like working for this train oh yes they come uh and they bow when they enter the 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 wagon yeah and then uh, they also bow when they leave go to another wagon every time they do that so. every time but also something i really love about these trains are the comfiness because you enter the train and i don't know if in other countries but in germany you have the super modern trains but with steps you have to carry all your luggage up these steps or if you have a family and kids you have to carry the wagon up there it's just super stupid there it's everything uh we call it barrierefrei no barriers barrier free uh, and also like the seats you have there if you're a group of six like a big family you can just turn around these seats and sit together and chat and as a group this is just so smart but also simple i don't know why we don't have that <laughs> <laughs> and also another good thing if you enter before you enter the train you will always have to go to the shops at the station because they sell you food and even that food is just super great and amazing food and you can get everything you want like deep fried stuff fresh sushi everything bento bento Most. bento yeah yeah i love it i think yeah. i had so many sushi rolls in my bags all the time i couldn't eat all but i just did <laughs> because it was yeah. yummy and uh, it was super cheap and of course you want to try everything so mm -hmm. yeah that's good so Next now we're in kyoto right yes this is yeah kyoto. i love it Hmm. Yeah, my mother is from Kyoto, or my, my grandmother lives in Kyoto. And uh, this is a shrine uh, where, where I also went when I was a very little kid. And uh, my sister was born in Kyoto. And uh, yeah, so um, we visited my grandma and uh, also some other people like Mr. Kato. <laughs> he is a ceramist, a very traditional ceramist uh, style. It's called Kiyomizuyaki. It's an area in um, Kyoto and he does this, uh, he's a craftsman ceramist um, who used this technique. And uh, he's also collaborating with artists or designer, even with a French designer, I think, and mm. make beautiful stuff. And um, uh, next to him is his wife. She's also very warm and nice. And behind them, um, there are two um, students who is learning this craftsmanship. And um, yeah, he treated us uh, i don't know why <laughs> i i made a logo once for him for his brand um but it's a long time ago and i i don't know he just welcomed us and gave us this wonderful food on the right you can see it's like the best meat i think you can get in yes. japan and kobe or yeah, wagyu yeah wagyu and it was just amazing also yeah it's just again it's just melting i don't know it's just filled with fat and i i'm sorry for all the vegetarians and vegan people but just super delicious for us meat eaters and but the problem was we were in this tiny room and it's not that made because we have to grill it by ourselves so we can decide how it should be but the fat was just getting it was the room was full of smoke because of all the fat and we were always have to choose between okay it's really cold outside so if we open the door or we just sit in our smoke and maybe we just all fall asleep i don't know but we're still alive so everything went well and had good food <laughs> yeah 
and um, Kyoto is very cold in winter and it's super, super cold there. I, I don't know. It's not minus 20 degrees or something, but uh, it feels very cold. And in the Japanese houses are built of, um, they are made of wood mostly because of the earthquakes and also humidity uh, in summer. And so in winter, it's very cold and but japan has the best invention ever it's called kotatsu oh yes and kotatsu is uh, just actually just a table with a heater in it and a blanket and you sit on the ground but this is the best thing because it keeps your leg and feet warm and you constantly fall asleep and you become a lazy lazy person and you try to do everything in kotatsu. Mm -hmm. You want to eat there and you don't want to stand up and go to the toilet. Or you, you try to be long in kotatsu as possible. And this is the, uh, my grandma's place. It's also very cold there. And uh, we had this uh, best time uh, because she was serving us food and we could stay in kotatsu. And this was just amazing. Also, that's how we spent our New Year's Eve, just in Kotatsu and sleeping. That was <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> one question about the bathroom, because uh, when I had my first night in a traditional Japanese house, it was also for me quite uh, weird because uh, the toilet system is a little bit different to the, yeah, to the, to other countries, right? <laughs> Because yeah. you have lots of buttons and uh, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, just standing warm there. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, and warm seats or you get get a shower to your butt. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I was just confused and I was more like, what to do now? <laughs> or you stand up and it flushes automatically. <laughs> yeah. So, crazy. Yeah. And they're so minimalistic, right? You you have the your your um, sleeping yeah bed mat um, in the in your wardrobe or something like that. So I was when I had my first night, I had to search for everything. Where's my bed? <laughs> my bed. No it's bed. an empty room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's true. Nice. You, have, you have to set it up for yourself uh, before you want to go to sleep, and on the next morning you just put it back in the closet and it's a lot of space right so not like in western countries you have an extra room for the bed and for sleeping for sleeping you just have it all in one room which is quite yeah so my room <laughs> it's a little yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but in japan there's not much space so especially in the cities um, so it's not so common that uh, people invite you also to to your to their homes, and um, because they live in a tiny houses, so you must be very uh, close to these friends or even just families. Um, that's why they don't have couch surfing or Airbnb not that much as here because they cannot like treat people as they wanted to like mm. welcome to welcome them yeah yeah this is my grandma um she is um i think over 80 years old but still working as a weaver and she weaves um the belt of the kimono so the the main part actually uh, the best part mm -hmm. of a kimono and um yeah she is just amazing because she is still working and uh, she actually works in like a kind of a museum uh, for this um nishijin weavery mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and um yeah she um is so nice and uh, i was really happy to see her although you could not speak like she can't speak english or anything or german um and you cannot speak japanese but 
somehow she was happy to welcome us and mm. it was really nice. But she, it looks that she really enjoys her work. So she works uh, because of pleasure. She wants to work or is it because of the system that she needs to work? No, actually she can already like <laughs> retire yeah. retire since 20 years <laughs> so she but she loves to she work loves her job and yes yes okay she loves it i mean not every day but maybe twice a week or th three times a week and three days a week but still i mean <laughs> i think she also still wants to keep the tradition because not many people are still doing that mm. It's a very special technique, and uh, she was even um, got a, a, like a prize by the emperor. An honor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> But is it yeah. her own company, or is she employed? No, she's em employed in in this museum ah, for okay. traditional reason. Yeah. And this is just around the corner of my grandma's place. Um, and it's surrounded by temples and shrines. And this is also very interesting for Japan that they coexist, like they're two religions, right? Um, temples are Buddhistic and shrines are Shintoistic. Um, so it's a natural, um, historic uh, religion, kind of a religion. Um, but they are next to each other and they don't contradict to each other. So, mm. And you go to a temple, next day you go to a shrine. It's not, not a problem for Japanese. What brings you luck is yeah. the option. <laughs> they, they get, yeah, what you can get. You know. So there are just some impressions of that area. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. I love the city or oh, the whole area. Also mm. Nara and yeah. Yeah, Nara is also beautiful. Yeah, and I think in the Second World War, um, the um, Kyoto was not bombed that uh, much or not at all, I think, because um the um the other side uh, knew that uh, there are so many cultural um yeah things mm -hmm. to keep they wanted to keep and not destroy so so one could. of the question was is the light um natural or a filter i think it's because of the winter mood right yes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just the winter uh, it's just natural light. I think, of course, I do do some retouch or color correction, like every photographer does. But in in some ways, it's just it looks the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe you mean that picture in the middle? It's just the light from outside, and through these paper glass paper windows, it gives these nice atmosphere. Yeah, I love your pictures. <laughs> Thank you. But Let's I can see. tell you, I saw in the chat that a lot of people like your pictures. So oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I think it's really the mood because uh, I was uh, also uh, most of the time in cold uh, on cold days in Japan, and it was not so packed, especially Kyoto, Nara. So it's really when you when you enter all these sh uh, shrine and temple areas, it's a little bit moody and uh, but mm, i love it totally. yeah. mm -hmm. so one of my spots to go was the kinkakuji the golden temple and you can see it's just gold there's another one it's called kinkakuji and it's silver <laughs> but this is the gold one and we went there and you have to go through this beautiful garden where you're only allowed to go to some specific places and then go through a path but it's very detailed and well like thought and con like designed path i think you can you, there are a lot of documentations for hours <laughs> talking about the rules in japanese gardens 
so I won't start with that. But as you can see on the right there, on the bottom picture, there are a lot of people and in some places they all stack together because th these are the best photogenic views of the building. <clears throat> but there was still enough space to, to walk around. And on the next picture, I, I forced Yuki to go with me on a second round. So you are only allowed to go in one direction. And when the sun set, just uh, sun dawn continued, the light turns and if the light's good, I need to take more pictures of it. <laughs> so we went another round and yeah, that's just the outcome. Yeah, one question was um, how many days would you recommend uh, for Kyoto? So what, wow. what would you say, Yuki, as an expert? <laughs> Kyoto, there's so many temples, like thousands of temples you can visit. Um, it depends on uh, what you want to see, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I would say at least one week. <laughs> or yeah. maybe a few more days more and you go to Osaka as well. So oh, you yeah. have the... Oh, Nara. Yeah, and you have this weird opposite cultures mm -hmm. in, next to each other. And the cities are not that far from each other. So this is also quite interesting. We haven't been to Osaka yet. So, so maybe I can just say, so I was eight days in um, Japan for one trip. I started in Osaka and then I had a one week um, train, a tourist train um, ticket. I think it was, it was 250 euros and I could use for seven days the whole train system, not the fastest, fastest trains, but it was enough. And I start, so I arrived in Osaka, then I took the train to um, Hiroshima. I was a little bit disappointed by Hiroshima. There's a little island that was stunning, that was incredible. I love the island. But then I took the train to um, Osaka back and then Nara and Kyoto. I loved Nara. For me, Nara was really an amazing spot, but mm -hmm. yeah. For me, it was eight days, and it was it was definitely good to discover um, most of it. But of course, if you really want to see all these temples and shrines, uh, shrines, 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 uh, really in detail, you definitely need uh, more time. But I would say. If you have two weeks, you can definitely discover the area around Osaka. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yes, I think so. So there are these typical things for Japan. And this is the, the way they build up their electricity system. And I'm really impressed by that to putting it up above your heads so because in germany we are not used to that it's all under the ground but of course it's a country full of earthquakes you, you put it above your head so you can fix it faster and another thing of course the uh vending machine vending machines they are everywhere in japan and some people say you can see them from from the uh, uh what's the what's my um, what? From this, yeah, just from above the earth, you can <laughs> see it. And they are just super because they are never broken and they always work. And you have a lot of uh, types you can pay. So there's a chance you will get something. And the best thing is you can get hot tea out of that in the bottle. And the tea is really good. So you should try that out. Oh, cool. Oh, cold, yeah, but the warm things are better in winter, at least. <laughs> yeah, then we went to Arashiyama. Arashiyama means storm mountain, and uh, it's located in the north of Kyoto. It's a mountain with bamboo uh, forest, mm. and um, yeah, it's beautiful there to, to just walk around and um yeah this is this is the picture from my tip from our trip 
because this just combines the essential part of Japan, except modern style. But this is how I expected Japan to be all over. But it's not, of course. But still, I love that picture and this area. So I would totally recommend it to go there. And this is kind of a hotel style living way. And probably also with hot springs. And also a thing, if you don't have tattoos, go check out the hot springs. Because if you have tattoos, it's in most parts, it's not allowed. I have tattoos, so it was hard to find places to get to. Yeah, but maybe you can just explain a little bit, just one, two sentence about the hot springs, because it's amazing. But uh, yeah, for me as a German girl, because in Germany, we are used to have mixed sauna and everything. So I was a little bit lost. Maybe you can just explain in two sentences how does ah, it work okay. in Japan? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Japan is actually an island and full of volcanoes and, um, yeah, um, or old mountains or old volcanoes and they have uh, natural uh, hot springs er almost everywhere. And um, Japanese people, they love to take a bath and not only shower, it's, a, it's a, even every day they take a bath. And um, yeah, in public baths, for example, it's um, yeah, still a lot of tattooed people are not allowed um, because it means that you are you belong to not so nice people like yakuza or kind of a mafia thing or yeah. So in public space, uh, showing a tattoo. Maybe not in Tokyo anymore, but uh, in traditional, more smaller places, it's not so well seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a hot spring, you always have to shower first in, at, before you enter the hot springs. And you go separate. Like in Germany, we all know, we go to the sauna. So we used to, that to go mixed with female or male or whatever you belong to. Uh, nobody, nobody got any problems with that. But in Japan, it's separate. Mm -hmm. That's also one point to know. So don't go to the wrong side. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's it. It's just, it depends on the hot spring, but some of them are really hot. So you need to get used to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a few minutes, it's just amazing. Yeah, go check so that nice. out. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, this is some more impressions. And on the right picture, you see uh, a couple uh, wearing a kimono, kimono, probably borrowed around the area. You can do that there and take nice pictures or just check out the traditional way of style. And Kyoto is still quite famous for uh, a lot of people walking around in, in kimonos or some geishas there. Mm. And that's because of because of the mayor of uh, Kyoto decided to uh, give people in kimono wearing kimono discounts, for example, uh, for taxi rides or in museums, uh, they get a, get a discount when they have a kimono wearing. You know, quite smart. And they are super expensive, right? They're super expensive. The traditional ones, they are <laughs> yeah, super expensive. They are super expensive, yeah. Food. Yeah, this is food again, <laughs> and this is quite special. I think you can explain it a bit better, but not too long. <laughs> yeah, um, this is um, the mochi. Maybe you know, it's like rice cake um, stuck on a, on bamboo um, yeah, sticks, and uh, this has a very special white miso miso. It's, um, soybean mm. paste and uh, people in Kyoto use white miso traditionally and not the red ones or the brown ones and this is kind of a sweet salty um, mochi very special for the for only this place in front of the shrine you saw before in this style you can only get it there so yeah I'm I'm I love Japanese houses and there are a lot of different styles 
and they always confuse me how they are living there because some of them just looks I don't know where the entrance is or why there are doors and windows so but I love it totally amazing oh yeah next spot is uh, Mount Fuji of course I haven't been to Japan before so I really wanted to go and check it out and I think we decided the day before oh let's go on the next day before sunrise we thought okay maybe that's a good idea so we woke up around three in the morning and then we slept like two or three hours and our friend drove us there and we enjoyed this view from the area it's called what's the name of this place yamanashi yamanashi prefecture mm -hmm. and the good thing about that place is you can go into a hot spring and check out the sunrise at mount fuji so three good things hot spring mount fuji and the sunrise yes all together yeah <laughs> sadly we are two photographers we need to take pictures so we didn't go to the hot spring at sunrise first we took some pictures and afterwards we went there yeah some but that's amazing it was definitely worth it yes it was like every second the sky the color was changing and it looks so different and so beautiful i mean mount fuji is a kind of seen as a holy um mountain but it looks really beautiful i think but it was really cold and it was really early so um we took a bath yes it was nice and look at the uh, mount fuji but we were super hungry and we had this breakfast uh, on top of this mountain and a very traditional breakfast and this is our friend junya who took us around <laughs> And that breakfast is just very special for Japan because Japanese people still, again, love raw things <laughs> and they love raw eggs and they just put it with soy sauce. There are some other ways to eat it, but the main version is soy sauce, raw egg mixed with hot rice. And I'm not used to that, but on that day, I loved it. I was so hungry. I just loved it. Since then, I can eat it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And again, uh, after that, our friend, he, he just loves to show us around. And he, he got a friend around that area. And he, that friend is... A wine. He has a wine yard. Yes, a yeah. wine yard. And so he asked us, yeah, do we want to check out that winery? And we were like, yeah, okay but does he know it's early? It was like nine or 10 in the morning. You can't just crash him and walk over there. But he said like, oh, it's better to not say something because otherwise he would be like, oh, I need to prepare something, food and host them very well because Japanese people are just very... Too, yeah, too much hospitality. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we went there and he welcomed us and he just served us four or five different appetizers all different and we had the wine tasting in the morning and he had this really wonderful land house you can see it on the left side i just i think i just went to the toilet and saw when i went to the toilet i saw this room so i have to take a picture of it i hope that was okay but that's the way i imagine it in japan Mm -hmm. and showed us also the winery yes and the winery mm -hmm. more food the yeah. food is called uh, and uh, it's also very special for this region it's a very thick udon noodle kind of thing and thick noodle in a vegetable um, and soup and delicious pumpkin I, I I love pumpkin before, but Japanese pumpkin, not Hokkaido pumpkin, forget that, the one you get here or in other countries. Typical Japanese pumpkin, just super delicious. No words for that. I loved it. Maybe one question for you, Florian. What was your souvenir? What did you bring home? 
lots of flavors. pictures, lots of memories, uh, and? And all the flavors I got there, okay. especially the food. And <laughs> I think, of course, like from my last trip, I bought a LP from a famous Japanese uh, hip hop artist. He did a lot of, uh... oh yeah, it's in the back. I don't know what to see. It's there. <laughs> and he died a few years ago, but I, I wanted to go there for, uh, to check out his LP and I found it. And that's kind of my souvenir from there again as okay. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> next spot, Fukuoka. Oh, Our last. Last, last spot is Fukuoka. Maybe you haven't heard of this city, uh, but it's the fourth biggest city in, in Japan, it's, and it's not that small. And um, I used to uh, live in Fukuoka for half a year for an ex as an exchange student. And uh, in, this, <laughs> in that time, I worked in a bar. Uh, because I like whiskey <laughs> and uh, this is the bar where I work and this is my um, yeah, my boss uh, I call him master like master <laughs> that's how you call the barkeepers in Japan so master uh, was super nice to me and uh, as you can check in on the top there are so many good scotch <laughs> scotch uh, bottles I tried them all I swear I hope and not in one night. No, um, bit by bit. So every night I, I uh, tried two and I worked there for half a year so I, I could uh, taste all. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I worked there and uh, he actually invited us to stay at his place as well and his uh, wife. Um, this was also very nice and um, yeah, at, every night in Fukuoka, I went to this, my favorite bar there and uh, drank with, uh, yeah, my friends or with him, with Masta. And um, yeah, on the next day, um, his wife, Masta's wife, uh, took us to, uh, I think it's a shrine. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because of New Year, we have to go to a shrine and again. And make some and... wishes for the year. And um, then she took us to the sea. And Fukuoka is also a very nice place because you have city, you have the sea, mm. you have amazing food, like the best food actually, and uh, mountains and very nice people there. The people are a bit different than um, people in Tokyo or Kyoto, I would say. They're more, yeah, on one way, they're kind of very traditional, but also very open and, um, yeah, more, more nice and warm hearted. Um, yeah, I love Fukuoka. This is the best city in Japan, I think. <laughs> And there's a Volkswagen, right? There's, it's also yes. one of the Volkswagen. <laughs> I'm still thinking about to, to remove the BMW because it just destroyed my picture. Because this <laughs> people just looks amazing there. Yeah, German cars are popular in Japan. Mm. Although Japan has a lot of uh, car brands too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is Maru. Maru is a friend of us. He also was an exchange student in Cologne for one year. And he made a whole tour through Fukuoka because he, he is actually from Fukuoka and he, he wanted to show us all his, his town. And first of all, we went to the best stinky tonkotsu ramen uh, in, in Fukuoka, Kurume. And um, then we went to the on the boat. Um, oh, Yanagawa, and the best thing about the boat, Kawakudari, and the boat has also a kotatsu on it. So, so there the, was a heater underneath the table. It was always warm. A blanket. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in the winter, of course, only. But yeah. But this is it a tourist boat or a public trans? Uh, no, that's a tourist. That's boat. tourist. Okay. You, you yeah. can book it, and a lot of people went there, and you can, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. not for. You can public get a transport. ride there, and 
uh, the person who is riding the boat, he explains uh, about the history of this place and sings a song. And uh, we also stopped in kind of a kiosk thing. And yes. We could buy some snacks and sake. And beer. And beer. And yeah, this was also very nice. Yeah. More food. More food, more temple. <laughs> Yeah, this is like a very uh, typical Fukuoka dish, like a hot pot. Um, and there's um, beef guts again, like the mm, yeah, belly um, inside. Intestines. Intestines, mm. yeah. And um, yeah, it tastes <clears throat> very nice and I love it. But uh, Flo thought it's a bit chewy or the consistency is a bit yeah, unusual. <laughs> but as you can see, if, if you're, there are a lot of food you can find for vegetarian or vegan people, but the main kitchen in Japan is based on meat or and fish. fish. Yeah. But there is still nice food you can get except without meat or fish, but still the, the, yeah, the best food is with meat. So. <laughs> I don't say it about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's next? Ah, yeah, your. This is the last slide, yeah. And um, this is my friend Hong. She used to live with me in, in a flat uh, in, in Cologne. And so she was also an exchange student from Japan, from originally from Korea, South Korea. And um, yeah, I also went to Fukuoka to meet her because she's one of my best friends and she took us to a standing sushi bar uh, and one sushi was only 100 yen but super fresh and super delicious and we I ate so much and you eat and you order sushi and each by each so you you order one or two sushi and you get them served like a few seconds later mm -hmm. And so it's super, fr you can't get it fresher, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, this weird picture with me, um, actually in Japan, one of my, um, yeah, to, to do, to do list <laughs> yeah. in Japan was to get uh, proper glasses for myself because I have an uh, Asian nose, like a small nose. And uh, the glasses, I live in Germany, and uh, it's hard to get proper glasses for my nose. It always goes down. And in Japan, you get uh, nice designed um, glasses very fast and very, and mm. it fits. So, yeah, this was also <laughs> important for me. So we didn't took any pictures of that place, sadly, but I, we have a video from the elevator. Of of a love hotel and love hotels are made for Japanese people because again there are not enough space for uh, young people mostly but also older people uh, so if you want to have some happy time and you don't want that your family is listening to you you can go to a love hotel or if you're on a business vacation, you can sleep there as well. <laughs> yeah. But you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so this was like a pirate Caribbean themed hotel, and we went into the room, and you got a slot machine inside your room, and you got karaoke. Karaoke. You can order food in from every every kind of food you wish, and you got a sauna inside of a steam sauna in your room. So. That was quite nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and should check that out. <laughs> yeah, this is a very interesting place also. Yeah. Yeah. So there's one question. Can you also tell us something about the cat restaurant? Is there a cat restaurant? I've never heard about it. There are cat restaurants. There are all restaurants. Every kind of animal you can imagine. But we I think hedgehog also. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we actually <laughs> but, never... Uh, yeah, after Corona, uh, maybe we shouldn't talk about all these animal restaurants and just skip this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
but last last slide where you can because some people asked uh, where we can see more of your pictures and uh, yeah so i think japan pictures are still not online but i will for you guys i will work on it and put them on the website and yeah i have my website you can check out and we have instagram where we take uh, show food our pictures, pictures. <laughs> yuki is especially uh, specialty is food pictures <laughs> but what's amazed me because i'm always like oh, don't take pictures of the food now it's embarrassing but at the end i always happy about that she took pictures of the food because we can always remember oh, that remember that food and a lot of friends <laughs> of us always tells us yeah we love yuki's pictures we always uh, take screenshots of it to just remember where we went to have food and they will went there, uh, go there afterwards. So you can check out Yuki's web uh, Instagram, especially for food. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the pictures are on my Instagram and website. Yes. Thank you so much yeah, for all the private uh, yeah, insights of your travel trip. And uh, has anyone a question, a last question, feel free to just, uh, yeah, ask or yeah, thank you so much for the presentation or more questions. I give you a second. Nothing. Okay, then thank you so much. It was a pleasure to travel with you to Japan. And uh, yeah, I got a few new insights. And uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Can you say that in Japan? Vielen Dank. So the, the last question is, can you say vielen Dank? Thank you a lot in Japan. In Japanese? Arigato gozaimashita. Oh, it's yeah, perfect. Uh, it's thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching us. Maybe we can make a last screenshot with a few waving hands, uh, if you don't mind. Can you just stop uh, sharing your screen? Yes, sure. Just then I can make one. Yeah. So. Who wants to join our picture? Feel free. Yeah. <laughs> One more. There are more people coming. <laughs> One more. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, next week we go to New Zealand. We have a musician uh, original from New Zealand who moved to Germany for love. So he will um, travel with us. Uh, in a mix of music and uh, storytelling. So if you wanna join us for our next destination, I hope to see every one of you. Otherwise, uh, stay healthy, stay happy, and uh, have a lovely day. In Germany, we have a good night now. And uh, yeah, see you all soon. And uh, big kisses, hugs, high fives, and yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.